Welcome to our session on non-symbolic consciousness. Just as a reminder, non-symbolic consciousness is represented on the far right side of the model. So it's underneath surrender. And basically that portion of the model that's underneath surrender is what we're going to be talking about during this session. You might be wondering to yourself, what is non-symbolic consciousness? Well, here are some very famous people, some more famous than others, I will grant you, that are well known as having proclaimed that they are in a persistent form of non-symbolic consciousness. In the middle is probably the most famous of all of them, right? The Buddha. Everyone has heard of Buddhism, I assume. Uh, and so Buddhism comes from Buddha and his teachings. There are a couple of other major religious figures from the past that I've represented here. Rumi as a famous Islamic uh, Sufi. St. Francis is a famous figure from Christianity. And then everyone else is really more contemporary. So Sri Aurobindo is one of the most famous people from the 1900s. And he was a very, very prolific explorer and, most importantly, documenter of his non-symbolic journey and experiences. Ramana Maharshi is another very, very famous person from sort of our era. Maharishi, you may be familiar with from Transcendental Meditation. He's actually the person that brought Transcendental Meditation through his organization, his very large worldwide organization, uh, to all of us. Bernadette Roberts is a very well-known Christian contemplative, once a Carmelite nun, and uh, has really gone very, very far. She claims to have gone further into non-symbolic consciousness than anyone else that has documented their journey in the Christian tradition. And she's got some great books uh, that I recommend, things like What is Self?, Another famous Easterner, uh, Muktananda, who brought um, some very powerful teachings to the West with him. Eckhart Tolle is someone that you may have heard of. He's been on Oprah. He's been on basically every media outlet imaginable. He had an awakening experience while he was in school in England, wound up spending a period of time sleeping in Hyde Park in London, um, totally happy, totally blissful, before sort of returning to the world and writing about his experiences. And he's got a couple of books out there at this point, lots of videos, uh, very accessible material online. Peter Fenner is also still alive. Uh, he's an Australian with a psychology background. His product is also very good. It's the Radiant Mind series of products, which includes a book, seminars, um, audio materials, etc. And Lester Levinson uh, was also someone recent to us, uh, though he passed away a number of years ago. Now, what's interesting if you look at this collection of people is that there are a broad range of times and cultures represented here. And yet everyone in this graphic basically asserts that they are in some sort of, or were, in some sort of persistent non-symbolic consciousness, whether it's the Buddha or Lester Levinson. And there's not just a variety of cultures and times located here, but there's an enormous variety of um, sort of worldview and perspective even beyond that. We've got different religions. We have some with no religion. When Lester Levinson uh, crossed the line into persistent non-symbolic consciousness, he really was a dyed-in-the-wool materialist physicist. So when we talk about non-symbolic consciousness, we're really talking about a range of experiences that are expressed in a number of different ways. And what we're going to try to do next is step into the academic literature, the academic research that's been done on this, because we really need a map. And the public material that's out there doesn't provide us with the map that we need.